Race car spelled backwards is still race car. This is the race car spelled backwards podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and with me, as always, is Jamie, and we are recording right after the race, actually. So the race just ended about two hours ago. Kevin Harvick won. If you missed that, I'm sorry, then you probably wouldn't be listening to that sh- this show, really. Well, you know, they could have got bored and just turned it off and said, hey, we'll figure it out on race car spelled backwards. Hey, I know a guy who doesn't watch the race, really, and he learns everything about the race from listening to this show. So, but actually, well, that's good. Scott texted me after the race was over and said, you know, old man Harvick did it again. So, oh, so he's watching now. We created a fan. That's exactly why we do this podcast. He like he likes NASCAR. That's the, that's my friend with the bad music taste. Bad music taste. What is that? Britney Spears. <laughs> Pretty much. He likes some indie indie pop indigo. Indie pop indigo. Yeah. I was trying to get him to go see Slipknot with me, and he said it was just too heavy for him. Too heavy for him. A little too much. Man. So, big news. Well. News out of this week, at least. Sam Mayer is going to return to Junior Motorsports in the number one Xfinity car next year. Yay! Oh, look, you can see the injury. The old wrap. The flesh eating. Hey, I, I think it's great that he's coming back, honestly. I mean, he's, oh, I do too. He needs a few years. Yeah, he'll, he'll he's, be- he's 19 years old. I mean, he's improved every race this year, so he's just going to continue to improve. He needs about another two years in Xfinity. Yeah, and he'll either be really good or he won't be good at all. You know, it's two years will be plenty of time to tell if he's got what it takes to be moved up to the next series or not, you know? And then he can race in the, you know, the for Rick Rare. The, the Rick Ware series? Yeah, the Rick Ware series. How do um, J.J. Yaley do today? I was watching for him to wreck the 15 all day, but he did a pretty good job. I mean... He was in the way a lot, but he didn't wreck anybody. How did Cody finish? Cody's been doing our well, no, he finished almost dead last. Did he wreck? I, no, I didn't no, see he him was, wreck. He, he was, was pedaling him and was, um no engine. He had to pedal. Well, JJ Yaley, BJ McLeod, Cody Ware were the last three cars running. Oh, that's see, normal. I got respect for BJ because you never hear him on the on the um broadcast, you know, he's not in the way. Cody and Cody's been doing really good here lately. I mean, we haven't complained about Cody in a while. No, I mean, Chastain's kind of taken his place. Chastain's taken everybody out. I mean, everybody's place. He's a hitman. Yeah, big time. Well, in other it's- signing news, you, sir, said you thought Bubba was on the firing line you didn't think he was going to get re-signed oh or how you didn't say he wasn't going to get re-signed you just you made it sound like it was worse off than it was i i said no issues at all well bubba goes and signs a multi-year contract with 2311 to stay in the 23 car i was shocked i figured they'd push bubba out and have the bush brothers driving for him i just see money being that important right now where Bubba brings sponsorship to the table. They're not going to send him anywhere. So what do you think a, a cup driver makes a newer one? Three to five million? Bubba Wallace? I that- say 1.5 to three is what they're getting paid to race. Do you think they get a portion of the purse? Maybe. Maybe, but I would think a small portion. I think they get it. They're, I think they get a larger portion of sponsorship sales, like, you know, what souvenir sales. I think they get a bigger Man, portion of that. 1.5 doesn't seem like a lot. A year? Yeah, especially for a cup driver. Yeah, well, I mean, you heard Denny say, like, Kyle Bush's market value right now is probably around $6 million because of the current market. Until you know what's going to happen on the new TV contract. So take a guess. What do you think Chase makes? He's a champion. 
I think Chase is making more than six million a year. I think Chase is Chase is probably making between six and ten salary. He's probably getting a decent piece of the purse. Sponsor money. I mean, he's sponsor money probably goes to the team, wouldn't you think? I don't know if a driver gets sponsor money. I think probably well, I think his salary his salary's paid out of the sponsor money. You know, let's say twenty million is what uh, Eminem's paid. So fifteen million went to Kyle Bush. A year? Yeah. You think he was fifteen? I think he was probably between ten and well, yeah, ten and fifteen. Fifteen on the max. But see, that's just it. Denny and I think Chase Elliott even came in on the tail end of that. But I what's funny to me is I think drivers like Greg Biffle were probably making as much money as Chase Elliott currently makes. Don't you think that's why he and say Kenseth are no longer driving? I think, yeah, I think that's exactly why. And I think that's why, I mean, the rumor has it coach and and Kyle are not even discussing re-signing now. So, and I believe that I think coach would be crazy not to go ahead and put Kyle. I mean, Ty in the car next year. So I'm sure they're not talking about it anymore. I'm sure. I think Kyle, Kyle, Kyle's already signed with somebody. I think you think, yeah, I need to stop kicking my chair and rocking around huh yeah i, can I don't think it. i don't think he signed with anyone it would have slipped out there's no secrets this year silly season is just super silly i think he signed I, I i don't know who though that's the crazy thing i think he could go i mean like we talked on thursday college racing chevy is chevy's made it very well known there they've entered the talks so he's got to convert all his Toyota trucks to Chevys now. I saw an interview with him after uh, qualifying where he said, look, I don't want to move the team if I don't have to. So I just, I think they, I think Toyota would be making a big mistake letting Kyle go, but I don't think he stays at Gibbs. I think the only way he stays in the Toyota is if Kurt doesn't return, I think he finishes Kurt's contract year out. And that's his, and that's Kyle's last year as well. Well, we'll, I mean, Kurt. I think Kyle, Kyle's got five, five to six years left in him. He's not done. And we even said he'd like eight and then he and uh, whatever his son's name is could drive the truck together. Yeah. So. But Kyle could go drive his own truck if he just What's wanted a, to race. And What's that would be son's scary. Name? Bushnell Bush. Braxton. You sure it's not Bushnell Bush? No. Braxton Bush? Yeah. Is it Braxton or Braxton? Hey, it's a good thing. You know that one Hollywood celebrity, she named her daughter um, Apple. It's a good thing there's not a – that Kyle and – Samantha didn't name their daughter Apple because that'd be just an Apple Bush and mm. be a good race it, car driver though. Well, you know, <laughs> that's who uh you know Apple Apple Bush takes the lead. Harvard could give her a ride after he takes the checker flag. Bring uh-huh. Apple Bush over here. Hey, did you see the pre-race show? It had that show called they did the thing with um Colby Garrison. She's blind. She has no. a show coming out on NBC. So I was on the plane. I think. That's right. That's right. So on NBC's YouTube page coming out on, I think the 16th of this week, it's a show called vivid Colby Garrison. She's blind. She rides along with Jeff Burton. And as he's driving, she describes what she hears and feels. And it's really cool. It was, hmm. it, it was quite, a, it was quite touching. Like actually it was pulling at the old heartstrings a little bit because, and I, I was surprised by it a little bit, but I don't know, man. It looks like it's going to be a really good perspective, you know, because this is somebody we're used to seeing it. And you know, as well as I do, what it's like at the racetrack. I mean, the smell, the sound, the guns on pit road. I mean, all those sounds add to the experience. Well, you think her hearing other cars go by more sensitive. Yeah. Blind. I'll have to watch it. You know, there's, Something else people could watch. I know we're 
mostly NASCAR. I got a little criticism from a listener. <laughs> he said, you drive a Porsche, you don't talk about IMSA. And he works for a, for a Porsche team. So, you know, giving you NASCAR crap. fans, they can, yeah, he's giving me some crap. But NASCAR fans should go look at the last four laps, the four-minute video of the 24 Hours of Daytona, and watch the two Porsche teams. One of them's staff team, which I root for. They just bump it out just like NASCAR. I mean, just, you were there. They beat the crap out of each other. You know what was crazy about that whole thing is, like, I remember the excitement when the day started for the – for the 24 hour race, like being in the stands, watching the very beginning of the race, we sat there and watched for a while. Then we just walked around. And then I remember being there and now it was freezing cold and three in the morning at 24 degrees. I look like the marshmallow man. Stay puffed. My arms are out to my side. I'm just wobbling around. (laughs) I can't even tie my shoes. I have on so many socks. We had everything we could wear. We could, but we could walk around anywhere at daytona i mean it was we were like walking under chains chained off areas i mean we were walking around the whole track and we're like can we go here there's nobody awake it's it's insane how how empty it felt there was probably more people on the race team in the stadium or in the track than there was fans you saw people sleeping they'd find areas out of the wind and were just passed out of sleep and then we go back to the hotel for a couple hours to warm up we come back to the track for the last few hours of the race, go down, hang out in the in, in the um, tents down the infields, go um, go back up the stands, and it's packed out crowd, and the whole energy's changed. I mean, yeah, so, we went and saw Denny, Blake, and Bo. Yeah, but the the energy of that event starts here, and it just kind of does this, and then and then, and then it ends way back up at the top again you know it's just it's crazy the ride you go on in the, in the energy you feel i mean i never even watched him until that day so i nothing. i think starting next week let's just go through the different divisions and the points leaders yeah i mean we can talk good with that i mean let's give them three or four minutes i mean we'll be back that's the thing we're going back to the 20 we've already got our tickets in our hotel for the 24 hours of daytona and 23 so we might as well talk about Emsa on the show. Nope, yeah. No, I wouldn't. And, you know, I've <laughs> this guy ragged on me. He's like, because he helps me with my Porsches on making repairs. He's like, dude, you say you got a race car. Why don't you just tell everybody it's a Porsche? <laughs> and, you I, know, I wasn't trying to disrespect Porsche because in, in my opinion, uh, God spoke to Dr. Porsche. And he said, hey, you need to build a car. But then he got caught up with that Nazi Hitler crap. And, you know, he the war was over. Volkswagen was run by the Americans and the British. And, you know, I might have the history wrong. And <laughs> Ferdinand Porsche prayed to God, said, dear God, you told me to build a car. And I did. And look what you've done. And God said, hey, you know, you got tied up with that Nazi crap. And the Volkswagen's good, but it's not great. Get back to work, doctor. doctor so he got back. Well, Dr. Really, Porsche. Did they Porsche. really call him Dr. Porsche? Yeah. Kind of so like Dr. Said, Pepper? Yeah. So they, you know, God said, get back to work, man. And then he built the Porsche. Now, I'm going to say 356. Some Porsche nut will probably, I know I'll get corrected. Guaranteed it. I just guarantee I'll get corrected. But when he finally showed the Porsche and said, look, this is, this is a small, lightweight car that can race. And God said, I forgive you for doing what you did with the Nazis. You have finally built perfection. <laughs> now, this is all in my opinion. But as you know, I am a just huge Porsche fan. Very opinionated. Yeah. I mean, I. <laughs> I believe it's the greatest car ever produced in this world. Yeah, well, I want to ride in your old Porsche, though. The old one is old, yeah. and it seems it's... it's still want to ride it. It's cranky. Well, actually, my newer one's still old. Yeah, that's fun, though. <laughs> All right, so we did race in Richmond. Chandler Smith 
leads the most laps, wins the race. The truck race, in my opinion, was horrible. Oh, it was. Like the cup race, Kevin Harvick goes out, wins the cup race. It's obvious he's not done. His career is not over. I said it last week. I thought it was a one and done type thing. I didn't think he would win again. Kevin goes out and win. The cup race wasn't the greatest race in the world, but. Didn't I call that? I don't remember. Did I? We've been saying since, I don't know, the first Richmond race that it was going to suck. I thought it was better than the first one. I mean, the, I, I, the truck race was horrible. I mean, I look, we used to go every year. We would go to Richmond, and the truck race was usually one of the better races there. The cup race used to be great there, too. But the truck race last night, that was tough to get through. I mean, it, it, I struggled to stay awake. How many cautions were there? Two? Yeah. for. I mean. For um, stage breaks. Yeah. I mean, it was hard. It was just, it was just boring. No, we had a little bit more excitement today. There was a little more racing today. There was, well, two, there was two lines that obviously worked. We we definitely had tire fall off. New tire, well, twelve did, lap newer tires. You saw the speed at the end of the race between Christopher Bell and Harvick with twelve. Oh yeah, he called him. Tires. Two more laps. What heck? One more lap. Bell would have had it. It would have been a done deal. One more lap. What about um, Chastain getting into Kyle Busch? You hear Kyle at the end of the race. He said asked, said something about what happened, and Kyle goes, oh, it was just our week. We got chastained. Do you have a feeling that the veteran NASCAR drivers think he's just this random pinball, and, you know, next week it's going to be some other driver's week? I do. And it seems like it doesn't matter, you know. It doesn't matter to Chastain who it is. No, he, he doesn't care. He's not picky. It does seem like he favors the Gibbs drivers more than the others, though. I wonder what he has against them. They didn't give him a contract. I mean, in that one wreck today, he got Kyle and got into Martin, who I thought Truex, man. I thought he was going to have a better day than he did. But didn't he still finish top 10? Where did he seventh? finish? Yeah. Seventh. And, you know, Blaney finished 10th. It was really between those are the two guys I was watching, but I, honestly, I expected Truex to win, and he just wasn't a factor all day. Well, should we call him old? We started calling Harvick old, and he won. No, I don't think we're going to go back down that road. That didn't seem to work in our favor. So Blaney or Blaney are in thirty-eight points today versus. Truex is 31 points and Truex finished in seventh and Blaney finished in 10th. So we have two more races and I, I'm really, I'm hoping. Chase Elliott is going to win Watkins Glen. I'm hoping that there's still an opening for one person to win at Daytona. Either way, either way, it's going to be insane. Well, I make, I'm going to make a prediction now. Austin Dillon is going to drive like a bat out of hell and win Daytona. No, he'll just wreck half the field. <laughs> he'll be responsible for one of the two big ones because he's trying, which is going to make the racing more interesting. All, all, Austin Dillon could win Daytona, though. I mean, Austin Dillon could go out and win Daytona. Brad Keselowski could win day. You know, actually, Chris Busher finished third today phenomenal run ford has definitely found their stride you know i think we can say at this point all manufacturers have had their their moment and they're all kind of firing if anything i think chevy's lagging behind right now i think think? yeah dude look for on short tracks maybe even at michigan toyota dominated michigan ford did great at michigan chevy didn't really perform well and when Chevy does perform, it's Chase Elliott, I guess, is consistent, but I don't know. I just think Ford is firing on all cylinders. Toyota is missing something on short tracks, but they're doing good on intermediate. 
I think Toyota's dominating intermediate tracks right now. Well, you know, and this is just a rumor going out there. When the FBI <laughs> served its warrant to Mar Lago, Chevy had some secrets hidden in the house. Yeah, that Trump was not supposed to take to Mar Largo, supposed to leave those secrets for NASCAR in the White House. He had the passcodes for track house mm -hmm. computer systems. That's, uh -huh. what I, that's what I heard too. And he sold it to the highest bidder. Actually, I heard that the Russians were running NASCAR and China on track house. Yeah, and you know how they're <laughs> running them? They're running them with the nuclear codes. Oh man, no, that's that's a rabbit hole. I don't want to go down. Do you think that could get us sued like that other conspiracy dude? Yeah, no, 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 no. So let's talk about Richmond. What's up with Richmond, man? Was it a good race? Was it no. not a good race? No. So scale one to ten, what would you give it? Four. Four. It sucked, man. I agree. I if I thought last, well. if if I thought last week sucked, what did I give last week? A five, five point five, I guess. Like, Something like that. But I gave it a four as well, and I'll vote no on the Gluck poll. I'll vote no for it. I don't think it was a good race. I gave it a four because it was better than last year's. Um, you know, the race started out lap three, Tyler Reddick get sideways i mean he doesn't even wreck i don't know why they threw a caution he barely loses he barely loses position they were like they, oh we got a bunch of we got a bunch them up or we won't have any excitement today i thought that was going to be how we go went all day but i don't know hey i'm staying at a, a marriott that's a 4.2 on google reviews you, you read the reviews before you got there yeah but i didn't have a choice because you notice they're still shifting. Yeah, man. That's killing it, man. I honestly, the shifting is when, you know, that this car at Richmond, when they were shifting this year earlier, we we saw said it was a problem. And Kevin Harvick even said it was a problem. That it's the gear ratios. I mean, I'm sure Harvick's not complaining right now, but do you think we'll see what the car was made for at Watkins Glen? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna, you know, we're gonna get at Watkins going the same crap we've got at every other road course—a boring race. I mean, we, we, I don't think we have a turn one, an Indy turn one at Watkins Glen, so that was the only excitement we got. Out well, of you Indy do Spirit. go down the hill, but it's not a complete. It's not a an turn. Indy, Thirty lanes to two. I think it's gonna be uh, crazy, ape shit crazy. Because you've got every driver that hasn't won yet is thinking, man, this is my chance. If I can win, I'm in. And I bounce everyone else out. Oh. So, so if you do the math and look, if Kurt Busch isn't driving and someone else wins, he's the first winner out. Yeah, so well, yeah, Kurt – Kurt's guaranteed. So, if is he I, guaranteed? What if we have a different no, winner I mean, at Watkins Glen? And he's a different guaranteed one? to be out, basically. Yeah. So, if we have one more winner, and then we have a new winner at Daytona, done. If we he's have done. two new winners, Kurt's out. Yep. And I don't. Watkins Glen is going to be would be a tough one to return on, I would think, because it's left and right for somebody with a concussion. And then Daytona, it would be hard for me to want my driver or my patient to go get in a car at Daytona for their first race back from a concussion. No, he's essentially sideways the whole race. Yeah, and then, then you Did got you like that impression. <laughs> I'm glad we have video this time. Here. Everybody will love the video we get of James. Here's Ross Chastain, though. You got to turn left into Kyle. <laughs> Or a Gibbs, <laughs> a Gibbs car. He only turns left into Gibbs cars. Yep. <laughs> now, Daytona is going to be a great race this year. Hey, Kyle Busch gets into Ty Gibbs, moving him out of the way. Two corners later, or one corner later, whatever, Ty Gibbs gets back into Kyle Busch, moving him back out of the way. I loved it, man. 
Ty's Ty's not going to take crap off anybody. Here's what I want to know. I want to know after Kyle Bush felt Ty Gibbs get back into him, did he hang the bird out the window? Hmm. Did he flip him off? You know, Kyle told, yeah. remember Kyle, Kyle called Ty out and said, Hey man, it's a bad look. Yep. So did Kyle flip off Ty? That's, that's what I want to know. Well, Kyle wasn't as big as a butthole post-race interview. No, that's because his new team owner probably doesn't is telling him he needs to chill out. There's, man, they leak so much stuff in NASCAR. If he was on a new team, we would have already known. I'm just saying, man. It's just it's hard for me to believe he's not. So that's I, like trying to catch water with a bucket made out of screen. Dude, I thought we were gonna be on this show complaining about a crappy Richmond race, which we are. Well, it sucked. Now, I will say it was it was cool to watch the high line and the low line. So we had two different lines. It wasn't just single file racing. You know, we did have some passing, watching Kyle and Ty Gibbs side by side, watching Harvick fight off, watching them run around lap traffic, watching the newer tires. So, I mean, it earned a four. Initially, after watching Ross Chastain and Clean Air run away with stage one and Joey make me throw up a little bit Logano, run away with stage two. I, I thought it was going to be horrible. I thought we were going to be in here playing about a crappy race and Joey Logano winning. I mean, he led 200 and something laps. How many did he lead? Ah, it was. It was 222 200. laps. Yeah. And lost or, and didn't win the race. So, thankfully, he didn't. That's I would because not have wanted to get on here and talk about that. I think when you laugh the way he does, your eyes close. Oh, and I yeah. think he was just laughing too hard while he was driving around Richmond, just going. <laughs> During his interview, I was making fun of him. I, I told my wife, I said, watch, he's going to start laughing like a hyena here in a minute. Sure enough, you uh, see that weird hyena smile. He's a strange dude, man. Hey, today's my anniversary, my wedding anniversary. Happy how anniversary. Long, how long I, has it been? 18 years. She's been putting up with me. Isn't your oldest 24? No, just playing. Maybe be older than me. <laughs> my math's horrible. So is my English. <laughs> All right. Hey, what about um Christopher Bell catching the apron, spinning out, and then coming back and finishing second like he did? I mean, that that was a strong move. I mean, I thought he was going to at least bump Kevin a little bit. One more lap. Actually, one more corner. Yeah, he I would have been able to hit him, and he would have hit probably. I mean, he would have probably chased Briscoe to and dive bombed him, and then third place wins. Yeah, Busher. Which, but like I said, Busher, I think has a really good chance of winning Daytona. What about Watkins Glen? You think he could win that? Yeah, I think Busher runs good. He does run good on road courses, right? Yeah. So I think definitely Busher could go out and win Watkins Glen. You know, one thing, one person we're not thinking about that could just throw a wrench is Brad. Brad, Brad used to run good at road courses, but he hasn't. Brad Kozlowski. He hasn't been that bad at uh, Super Speedways either. His I've first win it. was Talladega. I was about to say, I've seen him win at Talladega a couple times. So Ford's run good at Talladega anyway. But I, I mean, I think I saw him win in the Blue Deuce at Talladega one year, about what eight years ago. Did he been, win? I feel like it's been more recent than that. And the Miller Light Car. Me and John, me and John saw him win at Talladega when he drove in the two car. So, which I mean, the two and the twenty-two dominated Talladega. Even Blaney ran really good at Tal runs good at Talladega. So, Penske's always been really good at Talladega, but. They haven't been as good at Daytona as they have Talladega, so it's up in the air if they can go out and do the same thing. Well, the three of them could work together and really tear some stuff up, man. So I mean, meaning winning, not cause the big one tear up. Well, that's the other factor that plays into – Daytona is the big one. You know, you could have your you could have a surprise winner come out of Daytona with no problem whatsoever. 
it wouldn't surprise me and it wouldn't shock anybody to see Chris Busher, Austin Dillon, Harrison Burton. Wouldn't that be really? a surprise? I mean, yeah, it's, that, that, it's Daytona. That would... Corey LaJoy runs good at Daytona. Heck, what would happen? What? Who's higher than the points, Corey or Kurt? <laughs> hmm. Wouldn't that suck to win Daytona as Corey and not make it in because Kurt was still higher in the points, which I don't think he is. I think because Kurt's missed, he's got a waiver. Yeah, he's not, a, he's not accumulating points. What, yeah. His waiver's only good if he gets in yeah. on his so, win. I think Corey would probably get in over Kurt at that point. I'm just saying, wouldn't that be some crap <laughs> to go out and win? Oh, that would suck. Well, I, w- I wanted to throw a monkey wrench into into the show again by bringing Rocker Box out again. Rocker Box, yeah. Didn't a Rocker Box catch fire again? Chase Briscoe's Rocker Box <laughs> caught on fire, and he ends up going a few laps down as they have to clear the fire and smoke pit out of the cockpit. Dude, this is like three weeks in a row. What's going on with the rocker box? Chris Busher, he's burned out some rocker box. I mean, we saw a leaf blower in Busher's car trying to get the smoke out. And we saw what um, Custer burned his car up last weekend. And then this weekend, we had Briscoe catch his rocker box on fire. You know, we're on a roll with the rocker box. Well, I'm looking at an image of it right now. The rocker box? Yeah. You shouldn't be looking at that on a work computer. Ooh, you're yeah. right. They monitor your your computer usage, sir. Wow. That's not good. What's that? Getting fired for rocker boxing. Well, I'm looking at it. Hmm. okay all right man can't believe that causes the problems i think so here we're getting ready to go into the championship races who do you think's gonna do you think kevin harvick has a legitimate chance of winning a championship like last Um, weekend we discussed last week we discussed this on the show and i said this was a one-time fluke him winning last weekend not only does he win, he goes out and leads 55 laps and wins today. Um, Kevin Harvick is and his team, they're walking on sunshine right now. I mean, they're I'm telling you, they feel like they can beat anybody. Their chest is puffed out. And I think a Kevin Harvick who has momentum. A cocky, he's the most dangerous guy out there. You notice how cocky he was? Not cocky, not arrogant, but confident. Oh, he had that smile. Yeah, he had that look. Yeah, post race at uh, Winter Circle. I yeah. mean, he was like, mm-hmm. that's kind of scary. You know, it that doesn't that doesn't bode well for the rest of the competition. Because no, it doesn't. And what is Phoenix like if he can make it to the final? It's like a Richmond, except you can go six wide on that stupid. And who used to dominate corner. Phoenix? It used to be him. Yeah. Kevin Harvick used to be – you. he owned it. You knew going into Phoenix, if you didn't pick Harvick, you were screwed. So, I think going into Phoenix now, if Harvick's in the championship right now, people better take notice. Oh, I'd be scared. Problem is, I'm Kansas. Ask me how I feel about it after Kansas. Let's see how he runs on a 1.5 mile track. Ford in general, like it just, I need, I don't know. He could easily go in and we know if he doesn't run in a chase, he might have a chance at the Roval. Well, he even acted, you heard his little comment about Chase Elliott that he made today. Like if he would, uh, him and Chase wouldn't have got into the crap they got into. It might not have worked out the way it did for him. Basically saying he needs to focus on racing and not focus on screwing around with other drivers. Yep. Screwing around with rivalries. So you, 
So that was, you know what? That race just sucked. The more I think yeah, about it, it the more I appreciate last week. I'd probably bump up last week a point after. So I guess Chase Elliott is, he needs like two points to clinch the regular season championship. He's plus one, 116 points up on Ryan Blaney. So what does that mean? He has to start? He'll clin- he'll cl- yeah, I think he could very easily clinch it at Watkins Glen. I think the only way for Blaney to have a shot to come back and pass him would, they said Blaney would have to go in and win stage one, stage two, and win the race. And Chase Elliott would have to finish dead last and gain zero points. Stage Except points. Chase is going to win. So yeah, Chase is going to win. Watkins Glen. I don't know how Blaney could do it if Chase is winning it. Well, speaking of Watkins Glen, sir, if we were going and you weren't in Texas at a work meeting and I wasn't going to be an hour and a half from the track, where would we not want to stay at, sir? Well, there's this little town called Wellsville, and the hotel's called the Best Inn. I mean, that sounds like a five-star hotel. Unfortunately, it is a one out of five, according to D- Joe Denji. It's kind of like pig pen on peanuts, isn't it? Do so you think that's his real name? Joe Dingy? I sure hope not. Joe Dingy. Yeah, I hope not. Joe Dingy. So he said, if your vehicle can't keep you warm, this is where you go. Literally. Any extra $30 makes the difference between not being able to turn on the TV that is actually a computer monitor in a room that smells like chain smoking and bad decisions with the bathroom that has damaged wallpaper to an actual hotel room where you don't feel like you're going to catch full blown AIDS. If you touch anything, wow. I've stayed at a lot of places because they were cheap, but saving money in this instance is the worst decision of your life. I will include photos that you can review and make this decision for yourself. And when you look at the photos, you're like, Oh my God. Dude, he said it smells like chain smoking and bad decisions. Uh huh. And you could get full blown AIDS just in the room. <laughs> Sounds like the beach house in. You know what was amazing about this area? I saw hotels in the pictures. I was like, that's a one star. That's a one star. And they'd be like 4.5. I mean, you know, I had, we've run I had into to... this. We've run into that before. I mean, I, I feel like Pocono was that way. Remember? Yeah, it was. I feel like our northern, the farther west, north we go. Wisconsin was that way, Road America. Yeah, it I was. mean, it was there really, were a, a lot of good hotels there. I mean, just no sketch. name. Yeah, you're like, wow, this is built in the 1950s. Definitely wouldn't stop if you drove by a type of hotel. Yeah. And, you're, and the you're reviews like, like, this is the greatest place I've ever stayed in my life. And there's, you know, the slow ones are like four. No, no chain smoking and bad decisions there, huh? No. I mean, I had to dig deep to find crappy hotels. Full blown AIDS if you touch anything. So I had to do a Wellsville part two oh, because there, there was, was more. so there were so few crappy hotels, and this one was like total sketch. It's like, like a horror. It's like a future horror movie, Wellsville part two well i had to take a covid vaccine after reading (laughs) just reading the wellsville hotel (laughs) so we've got part two chase kramer now that sounds like a kramer that's a legit name isn't it don't you think better than joe dingy but and he said it's a one out of five on google and he said, booked a motel for Friday and Saturday night, 818 to 819. So almost a year ago. My friend and I arrive around 1.30 a.m. and had to be at practice for the next morning at 9 a.m. I don't know what he's practicing for. He doesn't tell us. He doesn't say. Could be but anything. He, it could be. The room was filthy. There were stains on the bedding, the floors and chairs. Drips of brown substance all over the bathroom walls. That is horrible. <laughs> that is just horrible. That's there was the this... nastiest thing I've ever. <laughs> Drips of brown substance all over the bathroom it's walls. Just... I told you this is a horror movie. <laughs> this is just a horrible place. There wasn't a single surface that wasn't dirty. 
where I could set my things down. My friend had all purpose cleaner in his car that we had to use to wipe the nightstand desk and dresser off to put our things. There was dust everywhere and it caused me to have an allergic reaction. Jeez, poop all over the place. And now he's going to have to go to the hospital. I woke up with a sore and swollen throat, swollen eyes, swollen sinuses, and a constant runny nose. Well, maybe he got COVID from the room. Well, there were an all-purpose cleaner. If he drank yeah. some of it, he probably didn't. There were fruit flies all over the room and in the coffee pot and house flies as well. There were dead bugs on the bathroom floor. I got back from practice the next day and needed a shower. The drain was clogged and the water was brown. Ooh, maybe that's Ooh. where the brown drops came from. Maybe they put the sewer line and the supply line for the water. Ooh. I know. And it's all coming down from upstairs. I went down to the office and waited for the manager to get out of the shower. There's a shower <laughs> in the office. And you can oh, see her. That is up in there. Hey, get out of that shower. I got to complain. <laughs> I demanded a refund. Woman handed me her cell phone and said, I need to talk to the owner. Her and some Colin. teenage. <laughs> yeah. Taking a shower, Colin. <laughs> Her and some teenagers who were staying there left and went in the back. Oh, was she showering alone? I'm not even my speculate on that one. <laughs> my friend and I would hear them talking, and someone said the oh. Yeah, we'll just keep going. I okay. talked to the owner, and he said that he would only refund Saturday night because I did not tell them about the condition of the room yesterday. Well, like they didn't know. When the office was closed. I argued with him for about 20 minutes, and he refused to refund both nights. I told him I report the situation, and he said, go ahead. I know how to, do, I know how to deal with customers like you. Was he the mafia? He'll kill you. <laughs> That's where that brown sludge is. It's old bodies. I took the refund for Saturday, but would like a refund for Friday, as well as considering the condition of the room. Well, you know... um. I would just be happy with whatever you got because most of the time you don't get anything back, as we know no, from personal yeah. experiences. They don't like to give you money. They so, like to double book the room and keep the money, but oh yeah. This what is does he mean? Like I know how to I deal can't get with customers the, like you. I can't get over the drips of brown substance <laughs> all over the bathroom walls. I, I think the sewer is hooked up to the water. Or He's stuffing the dead bodies in the water heater and they're decomposing and it's turning the water a rusty brown color. And that's what the drips are. It's decomposing bodies that the manager that knows how to deal with it is stuffing into the water heater. After reading the reviews, he doesn't know how to deal with reviews. <laughs> it's just a moron. I would kill you. Period. You, you will die. Hey, man, it's, it could be the mafia. Who knows? This I know how. This is New York. Wouldn't be, I, it'd be like that, that far-fetched. Let's see if I can puff up the cheeks. I got a little chickmunk face. <laughs> what What do you want from your grandfather? Oh, no, it's the godfather, not grandfather. <laughs> Jeez. And he sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> what do you know that's like vampires <laughs> what do you want that's german mafia <laughs> what do you want no i know how to deal with customers like you i don't know what that is that's dr ferdinand porsche <laughs> <laughs> dr pepper yeah dr pepper that's all you can get down here in texas did you know that Hey, I like Dr. Pepper. I like the um, cream soda. Dr. Pepper is my favorite. I haven't had that, but you oh, know, it's the best. If it's hard place... to find. Oh, dude, I had to point. I didn't want to say anything in front of a dealer, but did you notice that dealer we went to lunch with at that restaurant? They gave us Pepsi when we asked for Coke. I noticed that, but I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. But you know. They're probably more Pepsi in that area. We're more Coke in our area. But if they would have told me, I could have asked for Dr. Pepper. That is Mountain very Dew. true. I've actually been starting to order Dr. Pepper because most places carry Dr. Pepper with Coke and Pepsi. So you can't, you always get what you order for if you order Dr. Pepper. 
So that's what I'll have to just start doing. They can it's tell like me the no, right choice no. now. Then they can it say is the right choice. Then they can say no. We don't carry Dr. Pepper, but we have Coke. Pepsi or we have Coke. Yeah. All right. Where are we going next? Now we're going just south of Watkins Glen. And if you look at the name of the town, Tunkahonic, Pennsylvania. Tunkahonic. It's the Maplehurst Motel. And it's Nikki McGuire. I don't know Nikki at all. I've never met her. <laughs> you think? Yeah, but I think she's real. What would I mean? Why would you think you would know her? <laughs> well, you know, she's. Have you been to Tuckahonic? I I saw a sign to exit there once. Tuckahonic, PA. Once oh, I decided, you know we're to, screwing that name up. I decided to save on tolls driving back from dropping my son off in college in Boston. So I skipped the George Washington Bridge in New York City. Then I I skipped the Tappan Z, which is now called the Governor Cuomo Bridge. And I don't know which one it's named for, the corrupt one or the old corrupt one. One of those corrupt ones. (laughs) Either the first corrupt one or the second one. So I went even further north and crossed a bridge that was free to cross up by... Are you in Tunkahannock? No, actually, I just saw an accident. I think pointing, it's pointing think that it's, direction. I think it's probably Tonk Hannock. Isn't that what you said? Do you think that is an American Indian name or Probably. a German name? Indian. You think All so? Right. Where are we going? Or where we're we not going? What's the name where, of the hotel? It's the Maplehurst, dude. Yeah. One, one out of five. And they wrote it in all caps, but I'm not going to yell the whole Please thing. Don't. Because I th- that would make me go deaf. I, I think they're just, in. well, they're just yelling at us. They're not. Yeah asking me to yell at others and nikki says danger danger do not stay after the first night we switch rooms because we learned the door had been broken into and safety was an issue i have stayed in some dives in the u.s because we travel with our jobs but what happened next was just scary bum 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 <laughs> After being in the hotel for a week and a half, we came home after dinner to find that the lady who runs the whole the hotel sold our room to three drunk men <laughs> who went in and upon seeing someone's stuff, decided to help themselves to it. They were drinking our drinks, eating our food, and rifling through everything. My purse was scattered all over the bed. We called 911. The Miss Sopin... I don't think she knows how to spell a city's <laughs> name. That says me shopping. Uh huh. Police showed up only to inform us that they had pulled them over half an hour before that and gave them a DUI and brought <laughs> them to this hotel and watched the foreign woman sell them our room. So they had every legal right to be there and because they were drunk, could not be held responsible for their actions. But that sounds like a cop not wanting to fill out a report, doesn't it? What? Uh huh. That's not an excuse for anything. I was drunk. I didn't mean to kill those people, officer. I it's was still, drunk. It's still her purse in that room, too. It's yeah, not she theirs. had legal rights to that room, too. And so, they're not responsible because they're drunk. That's what I'm saying. That's I the know. Dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's ne- that excuse is never. It might have kept you from getting the death sentence over life. No, I was uh, drunk. Okay, we're going to give you life instead of the death sentence. No, officer, because it was not a domestic a terrorism attack, officer. No, I was drunk. I, I cannot be held responsible because I'm drunk. I've never. That's okay, that whatever. That's stupid. It is. The, the cops brought them there. Whatever. They got a refund. Was it the <laughs> Who got criminals? a refund? The cops the got a refund. Yeah, it might have been them too. They gave the cops a refund. I think they mean these criminals, these three stooges of men. Yeah. They got a refund and were let go. I think the police probably paid for the hotel. They dropped them off there. Then she says, the lady showed up and told me to calm down that it was not her fault. And since I guess the police said it was not the drunk's fault, I guess it was mine. 
it was yeah it lady it was you you came to the hotel rented a room the owner of the hotel rents the room to somebody else but it's your fault renter number one it's your fault that she double rented and they were still in your crap and the cops put the drunk people in your room no yeah I mean, they could have been rapists too, but it wouldn't have been their fault because they were drunk, they were drunk. I guess. Yeah. In that bizarre little town. But at least she got her a refund in me shopping, Pennsylvania. Yeah, me shopping. <laughs> me shopping, Pennsylvania. So the lady, the next morning, she came and showed up and wanted to give me towels. Why? For tears? <laughs> when I said no and went to shut the door, she stuck her foot in the door and would not let me close it. When I asked for her owner's last name and number, I was refused. No one in town seemed to know. So even though we had paid for a week, we left because it was not safe. Do not stay here. They never called or refunded or anything. Police were no help. It sounds like they're all, like they're all in on it. Yeah, it's, sounds like a little crappy town where no one has any jobs and they're all in on ripping off everybody. Of yeah, they want to catch anybody from not anybody outside of me shopping. They don't want nothing to do with you. Yeah, I guarantee the cops ran on it. All right, where are we going next? Well, we're going to fall on our crutch. Econo Lodge. Dun, 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 dun. Hornellsville. Hornellsville, New York. Is this by Wyndham? Yes. And it's Sabrina. This is just two weeks ago. Dun, dun, dun. You don't want to go there. Just just two weeks ago. And this, remember that other review of the other hotel where the guy said uh, the room stank of piss and bad decisions or something? Chain smoking and bad decisions. Right. Well, Sabrina here actually does a bad decision. <laughs> I mean, this is like everything. She stays out of Wyndham. Well, that, but wait till you hear where she ends up staying. And she, <laughs> she breaks every rule her parents ever told her. She gives it a one out of five. She said, I'm a little late on this review. This review. I stared, stayed there before I went home to Florida. It was Christmas Eve. So she wrote it two weeks ago, but it happened just before Christmas. The first night I woke up and I realized I'd been bitten by a bed bug. I called the front desk and the manager working at the time was named Mike. <laughs> and he was eager to help everyone. He said the motel did not have a washer and dryer, which is means the bedding wasn't washed. If you really think about it. Yeah. He offered to let me use his washer and dryer and to stay in the spare bedroom no until way. my flight. Well, he lived in the townhomes just over the hill above the motel. I gave his information to my family and friends. I gave him money for his generosity. Disclaimer. In hindsight, I was not using my best judgment. However, I was vulnerable position. I was in a vulnerable position, and this seemed better than bed bugs. He ended up stealing everything and taking some money. <laughs> Take everything I say with a grain of salt because my experience isn't going to be in everyone's. What? Which? What? Is this... I, I, I'm so confused by the ending here. Like, did she write this? Is a, a we were we were leading up to a good story. I mean, she a goes fiction to a assignment. Hotel. Then she ends up at Mike's house. Yeah, she goes to a hotel, catches crabs, meets a guy named Mike, goes to use his washer and dryer, spends the night. He steals all her crap, and then she wraps it up with, yeah, just take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I may or may not be lying. Because my experience isn't going to be everyone. Well, duh. Well, she's lucky she left with her life. Mike sounds like a serial killer, and he just didn't, he couldn't get into a room for some reason. It's about the sketchiest thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, you were. And using, it's like the she was using her worst judgment by far. And it's but like still. the Bates. It's like the Bates Hotel. He lived in the townhouses on the hill overlooking the hotel. What the hell? 
I mean, she gave her friends and relatives his name and number, but that, what's what good is that going to do? They know where Thank to send, They can. They know where to send the cops to find the body. And how did did she check Mike's ID? Is that and really? He stole, look, she Mike? says he stole everything, right? And some money. She couldn't steal so anything. He didn't steal house. everything. She gave him money for his generosity, and then he ended up stealing everything. But he only took some of the money. So then he didn't steal everything. He left her something. Well, it's his house. Why didn't she go snatch some things? This is Sabrina probably made all this up. The Econo Lodge is probably a crap hole. It probably is nasty. It probably has bed bugs, but the rest was probably her excuse why she didn't come home on time. There's more to this story than we're getting. Well, you know. She may have been writing a fiction assignment for her University of New York at Watkins Glen campus. Maybe. All right. Speaking of Watkins Glen, we are going to Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen is a 2.45 mile track. It has seven turns, an asphalt surface, 39,000 seating capacity. I don't know exactly how many it'll hold, though. I think 39,000 sounds really low. Like, I'm thinking maybe they have enough seats for 39,000, but with all the camping not, and stuff, yeah. they've got to be able to have... There's no way that's all they'll hold in there. I mean, it must Indy, be. Indy will hold 150,000. So, there's no way Watkins Glen's bigger... It is bigger than Indy, so there's no way it doesn't hold more than 39,000. It is an asphalt track. NASCAR owns it. First race was 1956. The race will be on USA Network and MRN Radio at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday. Do you know before 1956 and the track being built that Watkins Glen actually had Indy and F1 races going through town on a track like at Monaco? No, I didn't. Isn't that wacky? Do they still have some of the old track there, I wonder? Well, it's just regular roads. That's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, probably put up. I'm sure they put up railing or something, right? Curbing. No, they didn't use anything. Probably in probably in the fifties. As you said, have you ever seen the races at the Isle of Wit where just people die every year? Like four died this year. Really? Yeah. People like spectators. No, like drivers. Like they Uh, have. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Google it. Look it up on YouTube. What's it called? They have the um. It's the Isle of Wit races and just go to youtube and look up the sidecar races two guys died in the sidecar races they don't have seat belts they're actually like doing gymnastic planks all over the motorcycle on the sidecar <laughs> to so, counterbalance that sounds sketchy while they're doing 160 it's crazy it's the craziest it's just insane all right, well, going into Watkins Glen, you got Chase Elliott. He's raced there five times. He has two wins and three top tens. Kyle Busch, he has 16 races there, two wins, 13 top tens. Truex Jr. has 15 races, one win, 10 top tens. Joey Logano has 12 races, one win, five top tens. Larson has seven races, one win, and four top tens. And Denny Hamlin has 15 races there, one win and eight top tens. Your road course winners from this season, you had Ross Chastain won Coda. Daniel Suarez won at Sonoma. And Reddick is your most recent winners with the last two road races at Road America and the Indy Road Course. Going into Watkins Glen, Jamie, I am going to take Chase Elliott to win it. Tyler Reddick. Ross Chastain. Oh man, I got Martin Truex written down, but I think I want to change Martin Truex to Denny Hamlin. Mm. I did. I think Denny ran strong today, and he ran strong last weekend after his penalty. So I, I just I think Denny's Denny's got what Kevin Harvick has momentum. Heck, and honestly, Kevin Harvick has run good at road courses in the past, so I don't really know what his road course history is, but 
I do think he's ran good there in the past. I don't think he's going to win Watkins Glen. Yep. So that pretty much guarantees he'll win it if we say he won't. Cause I don't think. Well, I don't think he has a snowball's chance in hell. Yeah, I don't think he'll win Watkins Glen either. I think. I don't think. He, I would almost bet Harvick if he wins will win in the chase, not the next two races. Here's one I didn't put down on mine. What about Ty Gibbs? What if Kurt doesn't come back like we suspect? Ty Gibbs won his very first Xfinity race on the Daytona Roval. Why couldn't Ty Gibbs go out and win in the 45 car Glen? at Watkins Glen? Well, I'm not changing my picks. I'm sticking with Tyler, Chase, Denny, and Ross, but I'm just saying it very well could happen. I mean, well, I'll give you my picks. It's going to be got? Chase. I mean, out of the five races he's been in, there's a 100% chance he'll be top 10. Giving that he's only done five races in one, two, that's a 40% win ratio. There's no, there's no reason to go for anyone other than Chase Elliott. I agree with that. You even said that. We, I mean, we both said that. Yeah, I told week. you I was going to pick him. Yeah. I, I'm going to pick Ty Gibbs to come in. That's my second pick. I don't think – I think that's a really good pick. I mean, he. I mean, he's a talented guy. I think he would have done – I think he would have done decent today if his car would have held up. And I remember the one win Martin Truex had at Watkins Glen. It's my third pick. I'm going to then pick Daniel Suarez as my fourth pick. I almost think Daniel Suarez is a safer pick at this point than Ross Chastain. Like, I'm, I'm leaving Ross on my pick, but it's getting to the point now. Like, I had him, I picked him today in my NASCAR fantasy picks. And it's getting to the point where Ross is pissed off so many people. I can't win for losing with Ross. Have you noted? I mean, he'll run good, but he can't finish the dang race because of his shenanigans. There wasn't a lot of celebration when Ross won his first race at Coda. From no. the other from the other drivers. There was big celebration by the team, but when Suarez won. Almost every driver congratulated him. Yeah, see, Ross killed me in my fantasy points today because he got caught up in his own mess. I mean, he, look, he went in the turn trying not to get in. He gave the 42 room. I don't think he intentionally went in there to take Kyle mm -hmm. out. It's just, it's just a Ross Chess thing type of thing that happens right now. The number one is just attracted to everybody else's car, especially the Gibbs boys. So he killed me though. And it makes me nervous picking him because of that. Like, is he going to be able to finish the dang race? He's got to be able to close it. That's, that's why Ross isn't going to be able to win a championship. Nobody's going to let him win it. He's nope. pissed off way too many people. He's Kevin Harvick's make... the closer. Ross is the opener. He's got to make friends. Well, man, that's about all I got this week for you. You got anything else? No, I feel like the pace has just been about like the race today. Yeah. I think the whole that's, day. That's because you're in Texas after two and a half hours in security checkpoint at Hartsville Jackson in Atlanta. <laughs> well, that sucks. They're the worst airport in the country when it comes to security. Oh, that's a fact, man. I hate I hate it. And then, especially like you said, they don't have one TSA guy working it. And the dude, when I bring up my license for him to check, is watching a movie on his phone. Makes you feel real safe. Yeah. Like, yep, go through. Yep, go through. Yep, mm -hmm. go through. Well, enjoy your week out in Texas. Yeah. Everybody. Um, it's going to be a blast. Hey, make sure you check us out on YouTube. We'll have videos up. We come out with new video content you every week. You can put this on YouTube. Yeah, we'll have this whole episode video will be on 
you know, Spotify, Apple, the normal platforms, but we'll also have video. I guess the next two weeks we'll have video with our audio because if we're recording virtually the next two races or this weekend, next week. So we could record in the studio with our laptops open. Yeah, we tried and it made that horrible. Yeah, it made that weird echo. Yeah. We just got to get some cameras. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate everybody who listens every week. Thanks to everybody who shares our show. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. Watch our videos. You know, subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Spotify and rate us. Follow us on Twitter. We're at Car Backwards. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review and check out our website. It's racecarbackwards.com. Other than that, everyone, have a great week. We'll see you next week after Watkins Glen. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Race Car Spelled Backwards. Thank you.